The codec in Metal Gear Solid basically acts like a phone. You can send and receive calls from different characters on your codec. The people you talk to might explain the lore of the game to you, they might give you hints on what to do next, or they might turn into a living Wikipedia article so Hideo Kojima can talk about all of his niche fascinations. A cardboard box usually consists of a thin pasteboard with a corrugated paper center. They are usually made of recycled paper. It was first invented in Europe over 100 years ago. It was originally used for one of the masks with some of the wooden ones. What's with the box? Oh, nothing. No big deal. Each character has a specific five digit codec frequency that you use to contact them. Metal Gear Solid is a stealth game where you play as the soldier Solid Snake as he uncovers the various mysteries of Shadow Moses Island. The game feels claustrophobic, the environment is hostile, it's easy to feel powerless and alone, but the codec makes the journey a little less lonely. If you feel lonely or powerless, you may need to call for help. In 911 Operator, you play as someone who takes emergency phone calls from people who are in dire situations. 911, what's your emergency? Help. I shot my leg off. Some calls are bogus, so you have to put in a little bit of work to determine which situations actually need help. Once you get a notification about an emergency or a crime, you then have to send the appropriate emergency services to help. If there's a robbery, the police might be needed. If there's a fire, you'll need the fire department. If someone cuts off their leg, you'll probably need an ambulance. It's fairly straightforward, but as the game goes on, it'll get tougher as emergencies become more frequent. You'll have to dip into the budget to hire more officers and purchase more cars and equipment. The game can get pretty stressful once there's tons of emergencies going on at once. There's a ton of emergencies in the upcoming horror game Home Safety Hotline by Night Signal Entertainment. In this game, you also work as an operator who gets calls from people in need. Time over here. I got these snappers itching and whooping and crying all over the place. These people will tell you about issues they're having, like weird spots of dirt in their kitchen, or strange sounds, or people breaking into their houses at night, and it's up to you to figure out what the cause of their problem is, whether that be bugs, frozen pipes, or evil parasitic beets. It seems as though as the game goes on, you'll get stranger and stranger calls with people experiencing dangerous phenomena. And you must then send the client the information they need to solve their dilemma and potentially save their life. Sending the wrong information to the callers may have consequences later on. Someone needs to actually connect those phone calls though, so in Telephone Trouble by Galsy, you play as a switchboard operator. Nowadays when you call someone, connecting to them is automatic, but many decades ago, in the earlier days of the telephone, this was done manually by switchboard operators. They did this by using a cable that connected the jack of the person who was calling to the person that needed to receive the call. In Telephone Trouble, it is now your job to connect the cables of callers and receivers. Each phone has a code with a letter and a number like A5 or E2. You take these wires and you have to plug each end into the appropriate place. You gotta be quick though, because there's only a limited time to connect the call. Sometimes the game won't tell you what the code is of someone who's on the phone, so you'll have to look them up in your book. Those with a good memory can connect calls between people faster by remembering each person's code. Speaking of memory, it's a good idea to save often so games don't forget your progress. Earthbound makes you save by using phones. The person you call is your dad. No one knows what he looks like. Even in circumstances where you'd think that he would appear, nope. He's just represented by a picture of a telephone. In a lot of old RPGs, parents, and especially dads, are fairly uncommon, so your dad just being a phone is a pretty funny way to play around with the old trope. I can't call him a deadbeat because he does help you out by giving you an ATM card and depositing money into your account, but you have to wonder where he got that money from, because if you talk to one of your neighbors, apparently he owes your neighbor some money. But hey, I'm not asking any questions because he's doing me a favor by letting me save my game for free. 
Well, unless you use a payphone. In the early Yakuza games, you also use a payphone to save your game. You can use the payphone to store items in your item box as well. Not really sure how that one works. Eventually, the later games started giving you cell phones, and since cell phones are portable, you can save anywhere, which I thought was a pretty cool way to integrate modern technology with a more modern saving method. Even though you can use the cell phone to save, you can still save at payphones if you're feeling nostalgic though. Eventually, as cell phones became more common in the real world, game developers realized they should probably give the characters in their games cell phones too. Phones are usually a way for you to be contacted by other characters who will give you information or tell you what to do next. And of course, if your character has a phone in a video game these days, the phone will be sure to have a camera. Photo modes have become the norm for AAA games, even if your character doesn't have a phone camera. Most game consoles these days have a built-in screenshot feature, so you can instantly share these funny, entertaining, or interesting moments. You might get interesting moments shared with you over the phone in the Gen 2 Pokemon games and their remakes. In these games, you get a piece of tech called the Poke Gear, which has a number of features like a map, a radio, and a phone feature. People you meet, including some trainers that you battle, will give you their number, which will allow you to call each other. Sometimes you can talk to them and schedule Pokemon battle rematches, but other times when you chat with them, they'll gush about how cute their Pokemon is, or they'll ask you how your mother is doing, or they'll tell you about how cool their shorts are. It can be a bit silly and annoying, but I enjoy it when games make the NPCs seem like actual people who go out and do stuff, instead of just being completely stiff robots whose whole existence revolves around spitting out the same tired dialogue to you. Being able to call them and battle them again is a cool feature. You just gotta take some time to go to their location. Luckily for the protagonist of Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, he can move to the place where a telephone call is coming from. He has the power to possess different objects, jumping from one thing to the next. However, his range is fairly limited. Although, one thing he can do to bypass this flaw is to take control of telephones. Because landline phones are connected via phone wires, he can travel through the telephone line to go to places that are a long distance away. I'm always a sucker for neat ways of integrating story and gameplay mechanics, so I appreciate the game designers contextualizing fast travel as the ability to travel over telephone lines. The telephone lines being out is a classic horror movie trope, which is why it happens in Friday the 13th the game. When playing as one of the counselors, you'll have to fix the phone box to be able to call the police and get help so you don't get chopped up by Jason Voorhees. You can get help from the phone guy in Five Nights at Freddy's, although his help is less coming to save you and more half-heartedly giving you information to help keep yourself alive. This nameless guy calls you during your night shifts working at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. He's an experienced employee who gives you various tips about how to survive there in a very dry and almost uncaring way. He's a bit awkward, but at the end of the day, it is nice to have him around and not be completely alone with a bunch of killer animatronics. Speaking of killers, you play as one in Hotline Miami. You get calls from various people telling you to do things like go on a date with a girl or babysit some kids at a specific place and time, but it's all just a front. In reality, those places and times are where you're supposed to go to take out some targets. The game is a gory acid trip that I wouldn't recommend for the faint of heart, but at least at the end of missions you get to talk to your friend who works at the corner store. And the pizza spot. And the video shop. And the...